Well, a massive win for Sheffield United, who now have one foot inside the playoffs after that 3-1 win at Queen's Park Rangers. Kevin Gage and Rob Kosluck are both here. Let's start with you, Kevin. You had to commentate on that. How was it for you? It, it was exhilarating, but it was so enjoyable to commentate on a performance like that, especially second half. I mean, I thought we were quite good in the first half, to be honest. It was only the final ball and, and, the, and, and not enough shots and chances of goal. But second half, I mean, that was absolutely outstanding. And that Sheffield United at their absolute best, playing with all that creativity and, and positivity going forward. But, but the intensity of our play, you know, determination, desire to keep going and, you know, get shots in and get crosses in and flood men forward. It's just brilliant. Clearly, Paul Heckingbottom had words at half time. I'd love to know what he said because there was a marked difference, wasn't there, in intensity and tempo, Rob? Yeah, I was quite happy with the intensity from the start, though. And uh, going in at half time uh, with the 1 0 down, I think Eki didn't have to say much to them because it was pretty much of the same thing. But the tempo came out, second half, and Again, it was a dominant display from the Blades. I thought from start to finish, it was just the, the one chance didn't it, that made them, made them better. Yeah, huge character shown though, because 1-0 down in yeah. such an intense, pressurised atmosphere like that tells you yeah. what these players have got deep inside. Yeah, but the, the, the players aren't, you know, they're, they're professional footballers. They're not, they're not stupid. They know the game. They all know they've had a good first half. Mm. And you have to kind of ignore the scoreline to some extent and just and just trust your team and your teammates and your own ability to just keep going because you know law of averages said something was going to fall for us and we were going to create something and we were going to get enough shots and target to, and we were going to score the goal the, our equalizing goal came at just the right time you know because we had a lot of pressure in that first five minutes and second half and it kind of yes we've got our reward now come on then we, we've still got 40 minutes to win this 35 40 minutes to win this so we scored at the right time, but the way we just went on from that and didn't let up the intensity or the desire and just went forward and kept creating stuff was, was truly remarkable. I must admit, though, before the equaliser came, I thought it was going to be one of those nights. The young goalkeeper pulled off a few saves, they were getting last-minute blocks in. It just didn't seem to drop at all, did it? No, I think you saw it in the post, didn't you? We spoke about the young keeper, was it going to be his night? But uh, you knew as the game got on, that sort of uh, pressure on any side and the build-up and the way that Sheffield United was playing, I mean, there's, there's probably one of the better away performances of the year, hasn't it? It's called yeah. the right time. And we, and we spoke about, obviously, the team sat there watching this all across the country. It's a massive, it's a massive win. 27 shots in all nine that, on target that's got to be right up there if not the most amount of shots that Sheffield United have had oh, in a game un, this season undoubtedly yeah even on absolute dominating home performances you know in the past four or five years in the Chris Wilder era when we were just steamrolling teams we never had that many shots on target I would, I would doubt mm. that is an absolute dominator and we're away from home and QPR are a good side yeah they've fallen away recently but they've got some good players and the last home game of the season, that they're not wanting to get turned over like that tonight. But as Rob said, that sends a message out to every single one of those promotion uh, people in, in contention for, for promotion playoffs. Chef United are back, and you know, and if we play like that, we are going to take some stopping. We'll talk about how it leaves Sheffield United and the rest in a few minutes. But let's go through the goals and some of the main incidents from that first half. We spoke about Njai before the game. He stepped up and he's. He's got another one, and with no Billy Sharp and no recognised, established <laughs> centre forward, somebody has to take that mantle. Looks like it might be him. Well, somebody's going to have to get us the goals. So they're going to have to fire us to the, you know, to into the playoffs and, and beyond. And we'd only scored three goals in five games up to, you know, up to tonight. So to get three goals is a bonus. And yeah, it's great for Njai because he works so hard and he's so good creatively, you know, with his with his dribbling and his ability in and around the box. The only thing missing from his game is the clinical finishing. Yeah. He should have scored more goals this season. I think he's got six now, something like that, which isn't bad in the number of games he's played, but he could easily be sat here with double that figure. So it was good to see him finish that one today. I was cursing him in the first half when he missed that opportunity, but I'll forgive him for that. Uh, it's interesting, I was going to bring that up because it was clear that both Jack Lester and Paul Heckingbottom, when he lashed at that one in the first half and ballooned it over, they called him over for a chat, didn't they? Yeah, I think Jack might have been saying, look, he's a young keeper, 
don't do his job and put on wine or blaze them over. And we, you speak about Sharpie, don't you, because he is the striker, but he's instinctive in the box, which NGI, can, if he can drop on those half chances, can't you, get them on target, then you're going to get, get goals. Mm. The second goal, which obviously mm. was a key one, really well rehearsed set piece that wasn't it you could tell Norwood went over to the manager to celebrate yeah. which tells you that that is something they put a lot of work into a hundred percent you could tell immediately it was a set piece ploy and worked absolute perfection because Norwood was on the edge of the box and he drifted he actually ran back didn't he, he ran back 10-15 yards to receive the square ball but it's all then it's all about Norwood's technique and his ability to dink that, I say dink, he's dinked it 30, 40 yards, but he's got height on it, which has allowed Basham to arrive on the run. And even then, Basham's, I mean, it's easy to get carried away there. He could have headed that too far. It could have gone off the side of his head. You know, he could have messed it up completely, but he's headed it back into the completely right area. And then you're just hoping someone's on the end of it. And I love that, that replay when you see the determination of Robinson. You get the shot from behind the goal and you can see Robinson steaming in yeah. on that ball. His eyes firmly fixed on the ball and there was only going to be ever one winner of that header. And that, that, that fantastic. That epitomises Robinson's um, determination all round the pitch to win headers and tackles. It's fantastic. Thumping header, wasn't it? Yeah, I think I can see Maka now in the changing rooms going. He's, it's all all down to Maka. He's worked set piece. So, somebody's going to take expert. massive credit yeah, for that. Sure, oh, why not? Yeah, Maka's taking it. I can see it. Please for him because he, for me, is United's most improved player this season, yeah. Jack Robinson. When you think back to the early stages of the season where he had more than one or two wobbles, didn't yeah. he? And we wondered whether he'd have the mental capacity to come through it. My word, has he come through? He's completely turned his game around, hasn't he? Yeah, it was unfortunate. I think yeah. it was one or two mistakes. I remember one against Wolves where it was a misplaced pass in the FA Cup and it yeah. cost us a goal. Um, but I, I just love him. I, th I just think he, he, he's such a combative defender and he wins, as I, I've said many times in commentary, he wins important tackles and he wins important headers at the right time. And when the, when the cross is flashed over there, you can bet your bottom dollar that Robinson's going to be there heading it away. A bit like Egan, really. Very similar to Egan. Um, so, yeah, he's, he's had to bounce back because then Davis was his competition on the left-hand side. And, and the, the, the thinking in the club was Davis was a little bit better going forward, offered us a little bit more going forward. But I think Robinson, has, since he's come back in the side, not only has he been good defensively, but he's, he's been encouraged, he's, he's trusted himself to come forward with the ball. He seems more confident with the ball and he's getting involved in the attacking play just a little bit more and working well with Stevens. And I fully agree with you. I think he's the most improved player by a mile this season. And that long throw's a weapon. You know, you can't afford to not have that in tight games where you might need to get something yeah. off a set piece. That could be vital, couldn't it? Yeah, that gives you the other option. And tonight, I mean, that's caused cause QPR problems. It's going to cause any team's real problems, really. So, uh, yeah, Robinson's coming on and like you say, He's probably the first one on the team sheet now, and he knows what he can do, he knows what he can't do, and he's doing it well. Yeah, it's such a tonic when a lot of the discussion before the game was about Billy missing. It's funny that tonight they've got three goals and shared them around, which the manager will be thrilled with. He'll want a little bit more of that in the games that are left. Yeah, I mean, we don't know what we're going to need to do against Fulham, do we? But you couldn't have wished to go into the game next week against Fulham with a, on the back of a better performance than that. You know, it just sets it up perfectly. So whether we need to get a point, whether we need to win the game, we just don't know at the moment. But, but if they, it, it just all the players playing tonight, involved tonight, will be on an absolute high and they'll be full of confidence going into mm. next week. Lovely finish from Harahan to cap it off, wasn't it? Yeah, I think that shows the togetherness of what Eki's got, got together because you can sit on that bench for 80 minutes and salt because you're not playing. But Urian comes on, doesn't he? And he it's a great finish, but uh, Sander Berger looks up, picks him out, but you've still got to put it in the net and he does it well. Right, so in terms of how that leaves United now, I said at the start, one foot in the playoffs, five point gap over Middlesbrough. For me, when I look at it, I think that's knocked a couple out of the race now. For me, it's down to Blades and Borough. How do you see it? Well, I mean, I can't, I can't disagree with the league table, yeah, but you, you, I think we've got more than one foot in. I think we've got one foot in and, and four toes of our other foot in, to be honest. You know, I, I'm hugely, I was hugely confident two months ago that we'd get in the playoffs. 
Uh, we've slipped up occasionally, haven't we? You know, but um, you just have to have faith in the ability of the players and and the team. And mm -hmm. we have got such good quality in our team and in our. I was going to say our squad, but half of them are injured. So let's say our team. Um, that if they play to something like their ability, they were always going to come out on top. And I'm just pleased tonight that we have played to something like our ability, and we've got the results that our performances have des has deserved. How do you see it, Rob? Is it, is it two teams now, or do you still include Blackburn and Millwall in this yeah, equation? I don't think you can sit there quietly confident, because, uh, but what, what the main thing is, you can go into the last, last day with the fate in your own, own hands. You're not relying on nobody to do you a favour or anything, so uh, Eki will know that. He'll, he'll say the same, look, job's not done. Uh, and tomorrow, there's, there's some big, uh, big games tomorrow, and some teams haven't, haven't got easy fixtures. Mm. What would your preferred option be going into that final game? Would you rather be playing a team that's just got relegated, a team that might have just won the league? We don't know what Fulham are going to do against Luton on Monday, I think it is, when they could wrap up the title. Where, where do you sit on that? Would, would you rather play a Fulham or would you rather, say, play a Peterborough or a Barnsley? I would rather play a Peterborough or a Barnsley. <laughs> the guy be would, yeah. Because we've, we've discussed this at length you know, in, in previous shows and I'm sure in pubs all around Sheffield and conversations. And, and yeah, we're all saying, yeah, Fulham will have their uh, Hawaiian shirts on and have their suitcases packed to go on their promotion holiday. But sometimes it doesn't work out like that. And when the pressure's off, they've got some such good quality players, uh, Fulham, as they've proved with their record this season that they just might come here and put on a, you know, a wonderful performance and play us off the park. You know, so you just don't know what could happen. So I would rather play a mid-table side or someone who's got nothing to play for than Fulham. But listen, the way this season, the topsy-turvy nature of this season, you just don't know what to expect. But as Cosy said, it's just great to have the, our, our destiny in our own hands and not have to rely on somebody slipping up yeah. at home or you know dropping points somewhere where they shouldn't really do it you know we we seem to have done the hard work just need to finish it off now next saturday what would your preference be a fulham or a peterborough uh, i think uh, someone like a fulham i'm not too too bothered about coming because if if i was sat in the fulham camp and yeah they've got match winners on the day but do you want to go into the summer with an injury and all this so i'd have i'd have half my mind on I'm away, I'm going to the after party, I'm this, I'm that, so I think different. <laughs> and, and also what, what, what may happen mm. is there's no, uh, there's no reason why Fulham might just rest a few players. You know, you don't have to play your full first team strongest side out. He may well you know, rotate the squad round and give a few uh, squad players a game. They're still going to be good players, obviously. But it might not be their strongest side. You just, you just. That'll don't not know. go down well with some of those who are still in contention, will it? There'll be a few complaints going in if Marco Silva might make well, six, seven, eight changes for that last. <coughs> Sheffield last United game. have suffered on the other end of True that enough. in previous years, haven't they? True enough. Neil Warnock might have a good conversation <laughs> about that one. So let's not go down that particular rabbit hole. But as I said to you at the start, the mentality against Fulham, win. Absolutely. I, th I think yeah. it's dangerous, isn't it, if you go and think, well, a point will be enough. Then you get caught between two stalls, don't yeah. you? Yeah, we, we need to. We need to. Whether we can replicate that performance we've just seen is, is a tough order. That's a tall order. But uh, if we play anything like we've played tonight, then we're going to give Fulham a hell of a game. We'll probably will come out on top. Yeah. Thing is, we just don't know. We're sat here hypothesising. United might, might not even need a result by the time we get to that Fulham game. I mean, it would take an unlikely turn of events this weekend for that to happen. Well, well, let's hope it does turn out like that, and then we can all come in our Hawaiian shirts and our flip flops. <laughs> oh, I'd love to see around. that. Mine are staying in the drawer. Not that I own a Hawaiian shirt. I bet you do, though. I bet you own a few. I bet Rob does as well, to be fair. If I knew what hypothesising meant, I would comment. <laughs> <laughs> it's too long a word for me. Not even countdowns got that one. Flash the lights, nine laugh. But we, we can talk about more, <laughs> more generally what the manager's done now because they're pretty much there. To lead this team from where they were to the last game of the season in the top six with it almost sewn up, what a job. Yeah, it's absolutely yeah. remarkable. It's, it truly is remarkable. You know, the, it, it, 
it was crying out for change, wasn't it? We all kind of knew what needed to happen when Slav was here. We were all screaming, play the centre backs, bring Bashan back. He's kicking his heels on the bench, you know. But it's more than that, you know, Berger wasn't played in the right position. We kept trying to mess about with him in centre midfield. And yes, we had a few injuries at the time. Um, but we, did, we weren't getting the best out of our players, certainly. And, and Hecky's just come in, gone back to what we knew and what the players were comfortable with. Um, obviously energised the team don't know what's been said I think it was a master stroke bringing uh, Stuart McCall Black yeah. and probably promoting Jack Lester um, so I think that's helped behind the scenes as well and it seems to be a much better team spirit and camaraderie around the group uh, and that's manifested itself on performances on the pitch and, and we've thoroughly deserved to be where we've, where we've ended up whether it be fifth sixth whether we just miss out it's been a remarkable turnaround from November really truly remarkable and we've played we haven't we haven't fluked it either I, I said in the pre-game show I think we were due a little bit of luck to be honest maybe we got a touch of luck when the QPR uh, deflection and flick hit the bar but uh, I think we've deserved that overall I'm hoping the luck comes at it's Wembley still to come at yeah. Wembley yeah. because Palace Wolves Burnley Huddersfield we've all been at them all and they've lost them all yep but we do have a manager who's won in the playoffs as a manager and a player. Maybe, Ooh. just maybe, he's the one to finally break this Yeah, I saw that hoodoo. stat. Let's hope so. What do you reckon? Well, it's Sheffield United. We can probably ruin that stat for him, can't we? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like you know everything's conspired against United in a lot of ways mm. this season with the amount of injuries. Maybe, maybe it is... Sheffield United here. I'm not sure if fancy playing Forest right now, although they might still nick second. I think I'd probably prefer to play a Bournemouth, for example, at this stage. I don't know what you feel about that. Forest are just absolutely mm. flying. I know we're kind of getting ahead of ourselves a little bit here, but a few weeks' time, those playoffs kick in. It's going to be one of those two teams by the looks As of it. Someone once famously said, football's a funny old game. You just do not know what's around the corner, do you? So, no. you know... Mm. Uh, we, we've limped literally into the playoffs, haven't we? With the amount of injuries and, and problems we've had, that's probably a good analogy, a good way of putting it. Because we're limping into the playoffs, although you can't really dis call it after a performance like that, I would have, probably have to eat my words, but we're, we're scraping in sixth place. And, and maybe, yeah, may, maybe it's our time. We just don't know, do we? Well, we will find out soon enough, but Sheffield United have got the job done. They can kick back, relax, watch all the others sweat this weekend. They've opened up a five-point gap over seventh-placed Middlesbrough. It's over to you, Borough, and we shall see you here next weekend for the final game of the season, possibly. There might be a couple more to come, maybe three, fingers crossed. But the final game of the regular season is here against Fulham next weekend. We'll see you then, but for now, it's goodbye.